Hello, viewers. I'm SB. And I'm Amabel. And welcome to the beginning proper of Disco Elysium. Uh, once we get past this opening sequence here, we'll uh, we'll show the character sheet really quickly, just so people can see the choices that we made. If you know the people who didn't want to watch the character creation episode, um, but beyond that, without any further ado, let's begin. There is nothing, only warm primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it, no larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ha! Huh. Ever. Never, ever. And I would appreciate if you would read out loud the, the option that you are choosing in these dialogue things. Okay. Have, yeah. have some dialogue with the game. Okay. Am I... Are you thinking about this? Am I asleep? Is this what this is? I mean, you listen. You know what you know what you are supposed to know at this point. I guess I should wake up. The game. The game will not start unless you select yes. Never, ever, ever, baby. <laughs> uh simply keep on non-existing is what I'm doing. And an audience amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. Give me some more. You got it, sweet brother. Nothing upon nothing upon nothing. <laughs> How about you cough up some more of that sweet oblivion? Coming right up, sir. Smooth passy. How are, you feel, how are you feeling about it so far? It's distinct, distinctive. Uh, but I, I want to get off now. I like pain and burning light and wanting things from people who don't want to give them. Well, this is. Talked to my therapist in a couple days about this. Really? I do. Let me off. Would like it if I told you what was back there? Why'd you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much on yourself, got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? Fear and apprehension. You should ask us out there first. So you can see you've, you've had a skill check here. A huge percentage of the skill checks in this game are invisible. They happen behind the scenes, okay. and you will only know that something occurred when you either once you have either succeeded or failed. Uh, I'll go with tell me what's waiting for me. There's this giant ball there. An evil ape. An evil ape's so juking it out on the ball. You're one of them. It's basically all just evil apes juking it out on a giant ball. I love that these are the available responses. Yeah, um, I don't care how big the ball is. I care about how small are the apes. Infinitesimally small. I'm going to ask the same thing again. In so you can oh, see if you if you mouse off of these, you can see things you've already said where you've heard the answer already are sort of like um, okay. dimmed a little bit. So imagine how big is the ball. Out, it's a ball when you're joking it out. It's that large. This duking it out I keep hearing about. What's that? Time for resources. It's just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you lose. That is sad. Yes, it is. And you drowned in that sadness a long time ago. What do you mean drowned? 
Oops, open. Okay, I'm gonna open my eyes. Oh, there are graphics. Okay. <laughs> yep. It is not, in fact, a Twine game. Welcome to your ass. Okay, there are points I can walk towards by clicking. Is this just a mouse game? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty much just a mouse game. So I'm going to put on a shirt. Uh, that is, in fact, a disco-ass blazer. Congratulations, you got that on with no pants. It's a strong look. You see bottles in the bathtub. Wine, beer, and sweet liqueurs. Hold tab to highlight stuff. Let's see, when you do that, it'll, it'll show a little highlight around everything you can interact with in the immediate environment. A white satin shirt. So you notice that the clothing you're wearing is affecting your stats. Yeah. Okay. And there's a there's a panel on the left there that tells you what your total stat change is from okay. your from your clothing. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Gee, I wonder. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. I, I will... As you wipe slowly the mirror. reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Uh, I don't care. I'll still wipe the beer. Behold. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would have... It's a pretty solid little horror thing there. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Well, apply your detective skills. Yeah, no, this is the face of a late stage alcoholic. It's... Too late. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face. Oh, wait. Is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? Yeah, what is that? What's your face doing? Uh, that's, it's kind of a smile, uh, it's such a sad smile. Please stop. I'm not making it. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. You gotta, you gotta say the thing before you click. Before I click it, When yeah. you click, the game's gonna talk. <laughs> yeah, good. So, thank you. You, you are a professional. Uh, yeah, this. I'm a professional. It's a, it's a am, rookie mistake. Okay, um. Okay, I'm gonna try to oh stop. Oh my god. You can't stop. It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? Yeah, among these, what do you what do you reckon? It's an expression of pain. You are correct. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay, I, I will try the encyclopedia. Okay, a, formi a formidable check. Yeah, well, it's better than an impossible one. L literally true. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. All right, I'll I look the mirror. I really like the just like all of the all of the tiny little like I like the writing of this game on a large scale, like the construction of the plot and everything. But also, 
I like the writing of this game on the very, on the very, very small scale at the sentence level, like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past is, it's just beautiful. Well, the thing about writing, I think about writing a lot actually yeah. with games because, mm-hmm. um, especially working in analog games, um, there, there is a fair amount of writing, especially historical games. Sure. And the thing about writing that people don't seem to understand is that writing is magic. It's a magic spell. The order you put the words in matters. The the words you choose matter. And so many writing, especially in board games, um, don't seem to know that. And they just kind of half-ass it. And so anytime I see a, a, a game, board or video game, um, where they pay attention to the sound of words, to the cadence, to emotional resonance. It definitely gets my attention. And and this is doing that so far. I'm going to let the mirror be for now. Do you feel like you learned just good and valuable things there? Uh, yeah. Wait, can I? Okay. Oh, there are pants. There are pants. All right. I will put on... I should put on pants. <laughs> oh. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare-cut pants. I'm going to fish them out. It says, whirling in rags on the aluminum key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. Okay, well, I'm not quite ready to leave yet. I'm going to find out what... This magnum-sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. All right. Looks like someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. This reel-to-reel tape player is still on, rolling empty. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of tape all over the floor there. Oh, yeah, wow. Uh, right. The environments are, are quite intricate in this in this game. You're going to definitely want to, like, you know, take some take some lot. time looking them in, or uh, taking them in. Oh, shoes. With, okay, that's Sh- one shoe. Shoe singular, yeah. Okay. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Okay, I'm gonna pull on the fan first. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. Oh, look at that. You have a plus three because the fan's turned off. Still not and trivial. Catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. What you have in your hand is a truly hideous neck tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. Alright, I'm going to I'll turn the lights Terrible off. Terrible mistake. Oh. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. Why why does that do that? It's just a little hangover induced photosensitivity. Ow. Don't overreact. So you don't really drink. I've never had a drop of alcohol in my life. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I do get migraines, though. I do know what, what light sensitivity is like, though. Um, well, it's just yeah, like it didn't. It, it like fully didn't occur to you that that's like the situation that you were in. It feels like. I did not. No. Okay, so you got some. You got some clothes now. Your stats are all, all fucked up and and weird. Yeah. You have one shoe on. calendar says it's March. The year is 51. Hey, 
it's a person. I can talk to a person, maybe. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Oof, that's... So you got to remember, like, a lot of the text is sort of coming from your character's interiority, oh, yeah. and as such, you know. Yeah, this, yeah. this person does not like himself very much. Yeah, that is <laughs> immediately exceedingly clear. Yeah. And perhaps it, perhaps familiar. Uh, yeah, no, uh, the, the, <laughs> there, I, I, I am familiar with, especially before I figured my my stuff out, having a lot of self love, especially from about my physical appearance. Um, yeah, absolutely same. So I have a question. So uh -huh. is is this self loathing uh, dependent on choices I made in character creation, or or is the does this guy just hate himself regardless? Okay, we talked we talked a little bit about like what degree you want yeah uh, information yeah, you're right. like how how much to keep sort of under uh, close to the vest uh, about what I know about the game, but that is a direct question so I will answer it. Uh, no, it doesn't matter um, there's no okay. version of this character you can craft who is not filled with self-loathing and particularly loathing about his appearance. That mirror sequence goes much the same no matter what you. Okay. Um, you know, I, I am going to respond with the dialogue option. Officer, am I a military personnel? Uh, just so we could... I want to have a conversation with someone, you know? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, then why did you call me an officer? Oh, I don't know I'm a cop. Oh, this is fun. Because you're a police officer, sir. <laughs> Just strong responses. I don't like the third one. I'm, I, 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 I will refuse to play this cop like a cop if I can avoid it. Um, <laughs> you're shitting me, it's fun. I'm not, unless you've been shitting us all this time. All this time? You've been here for three days on official police business, no less. And what business is that? Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. So you notice here you have a you have a check available, but it's presented quite differently. Yeah, I don't like that. But it's this important. But it's important for you to recognize the game mechanics is all. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. But this, this is not appropriate. I, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Why don't I remember being a cop or anything? Actually, I should get going now because I, I don't think I want to reveal the extent of my. Okay. Yeah. Trouble. Of course. Be careful, officer. They don't like the police around here. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. Goodbye. Looks like she left a nice long stub in the ashtray. It's still smoking. Gross. Well, I think the the you know the implication is that she was not anywhere near done smoking. Yeah, but she wanted to get out of there. This is the weekend edition of the satirical newspaper Trompe Le Monde. So obviously, it's not it's not our world. Yeah. Um, but it does have a lot of uh, our worldishness in it, including like. A language that they would not call French, but that is obviously French. So in, in any case, I hope your French is good, is what I'm saying. It's not. All right. I have a couple of years of high school French. I might be able to do a little something here and there. A big old karaoke mic just waiting for someone to sing into it. 
This is where the lyrics would be. The speaker is connected to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. Do you notice the... This menu has been wiped clean. Only the word Monday is written on it. Did I notice what? You didn't then. Go back over there. You're going to have to pay attention, sweetie. I'm this. You should totally sing karaoke here. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. How vast and oceanic is your soul? Ah. Uh, gosh. I'm going to discard the thought because okay. that's. Because you disagree, you do not need to sing karaoke here? I mean, I never. No one. Hot take. No one ever needs to sing karaoke anymore. <laughs> a man in Fair his enough. late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he's purposely ignoring you. Yeah, something tells me you don't oh, like no. me. Oh no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. Again, you gotta you gotta read the thing with then click. I did, I did you say know. it. I mean, but you clicked while you were still speaking, so you and Garter are talking at the same time. I'm um, sorry. Could the massive property damage upstairs have anything to do with this? You're being sarcastic. Am I? Or did you ride in, take the body down, solve the murder, and not trash my hostel room? I'm guessing I didn't do any You're of those right. things. You're right, you didn't, and it's only taken you three days not to. <laughs> this, this is a really good way to, to start you in a story where you just don't know. Like, because, you know, you as the player don't know all the mm -hmm. things that a character would know, but the character also just does not know. Yeah, uh, this, is, this is sort of a classic... Uh, CRPG device. There are so many CRPGs where a, your character has amnesia for some reason. Yeah. What have I been doing all that time? Have you seen me around? No, I haven't seen you around. I'm not always here. Fucking at the bird. Uh, I'm gonna look at the stuffed bird. The competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. Mm. Something about it makes you feel bitter. Hmm. What happened to the bird? Look. Your buddy is over there. He looks at the doors where a man in a bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? What do you mean, my buddy? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. All right, I'm going to leave. Arabelle, I think that guy might not like you very much. No, and I'm very likable. <laughs> That's true. Oh, free silverware. Oh, no so fat. A healing item. This is a water cooler. A large bubble is rising to the surface. Where is it this door he was talking about? No, he was talking about the door that the the game showed you in that big camera sweep when we came down here. Okay. A sign reads, Mess Hall reserved for union members. Doors open 1600. 
This royal pinball machine is unplugged. Travesty. Hey. Hello, sweetie. Aww. What a what an introduction. Your colleague waiting. She nods toward the man in the orange bomber jacket. To to have a character just introduced as Alina, the cryptozoologist's wife, it it's so much information so quickly. <laughs> A bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. He almost said bespectacled. It was close. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? I'm shake his hand. Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative, conceptual. Hey, this is like your whole thing. Well, kind of. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon, but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. I actually really like the idea of your character as somebody who's like, he's great at the physical stuff and not so great at the conceptualization, but the conceptualization is the thing that like he aspires to. Yeah. It is not yet time. It's very good. <laughs> but I'm, if I don't... I, I'm going to try, despite the character clearly not liking himself and everyone seeming to not like him, mm -hmm. I'm trying not to be a weird asshole to people. <laughs> so I don't really know my name is what I'm going to say. Okay, then. He processes the information, then disregards it. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? Uh, you mean him? I nod towards the cafeteria manager. Yeah, I just thought that. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. <clears throat> Have you mapped out the initial interview? I appreciate that he caught himself. Uh, I have a... Yes, the police. I'm aware I'm a policeman. Okay, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? <laughs> I'd, maybe I did. I, no, because the guy said no. So yeah, I didn't. no. You you were told that you did not. I'm just so no. The body is still in the tree. I'm just saying. I really love the option above that. Look, man. You you know. Yeah. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred <laughs> for the body to no longer be in the tree. Yeah, oh, that makes sense. Good. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. What a shame. Get to it now. Rip that body down from the tree. All right, physical instrument. Just take it easy. Let's get As going, you, then. Officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? Could work logic. You mean you don't have a badge? Uh. What's not me when I woke up? Education card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. 
I was expecting a little fanfare. Yeah, he doesn't really have theme music or anything. The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Can I say also how deeply uncomfortable it is to be put in a situation where I've clearly screwed up and, and like, but it's not my fault because I started playing the game. I mean, if it's, it's not your fault, whose fault is it? It's, I, I'm saying it's, what if one day you woke up in a body and it felt like the body wasn't really yours? Yeah, but yes, but it I'm saying it is evocative of a particular feeling. Yeah, absolutely. That that I don't think the amnesia trope in RPG necessarily gets across this well. Uh, you know, I mean I haven't, I haven't played as many, but Okay. I, I will say that I, I think that it, it often is used in this way. It was like, like the, you have amnesia, and clearly, like, you did something. The Whoever you were before did something wrong. There's some kind of situation that is bad because you made it bad. And now, here you are afresh in the middle of it. Well, sure. There's, like, uh, that um, the game where you wake up in the bathroom mm. with, with the dead body. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Sure, let's say so. Uh, F Fahrenheit? Okay. The David Cage game. Yeah. Um, but, like, that kind of thing, you woke up and turned out you did a murder or something, it's a different feeling than this kind of social awkwardness. I think that's what this is evoking really well. Okay. Like, like feeling like you've disappointed This people. is the thing where people, specifically, it's the thing where people are mad at you about it that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I, okay, again, that is common. Okay. Okay, well, this is this is why you play video games for a living and I don't. Mr. Gart, right? You run this place. It's funny that, like, for the for the parts where it's mixed dialogue and um and narration, they're not narrating. They're not narrating, but they are leaving space for the narration. Yeah. Yes. He responds tersely. Thank you. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41. He looks at you, realizing he still doesn't know your name. I'm currently in between names. It's a, it's a, that's a very trans answer. I'm going to use that Fantastic. one. Fantastic. Cool, Gart loves it. I'm just gonna let Kim talk. Yeah. Kim about to say something, let him. Right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report a dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. He looks behind a pile of coasters, finds a slip of paper, and hands it to the lieutenant. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only <coughs> sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. It's very impressive. Jamrock was a, was a CD they released every year. Like Now it's why it's called Jamrock. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are. But as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. It's a weird I defensiveness. That. Detective. It's Why? your turn. Oh, you mean questions? <laughs> yes, yes. He means, do you have questions for me, like a police officer would? The cafeteria manager is clearly agitated again. 
Why did Sylvie go away? She went away because none of your business. Fine. Extra fine. Behind exactly. this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. I was asking where exactly is the body. I did it again. I, I will get this down pat. How do we get there then? That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. Uh, who killed him? <laughs> so This will be a really short game if he has an answer for this. I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. <laughs> Sounds like something someone who killed him would say. Did you kill him? What are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him. Suddenly you tense up. Blood is being pushed to your muscles. You should hound him on this. Hound him hard. The prey drive says. This is, this is half light. Half light's kicking in. What? Uh, and half light again is my like instinct. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Are you sure? Did you kill him, Guardy? Cart. He just said his name to you. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> you can tell me, Guard. You killed him, right? You, you know it. I didn't. I don't appreciate this. What is this? Why did you have to kill him? Do I have to answer him? Is this mandatory? The lieutenant stands motionless. His expression unreadable. Did he hurt you? Is that why? Or did you get some kind of sick kick out of killing him? What are you, an idiot? I told you I haven't killed anyone. Anyone? If you killed someone? You got him. You got him on the ropes. Just keep pushing. He ignores you. More. Press on. Push through. <laughs> oh, oh no. You got that feel. You got that vibe. Did Did you kill Sylvie? Fuck you, man. <laughs> Damn. That's enough. You can't tell who the remark is aimed at. You or Gart. Okay, I believe you. Mm. This time. Thank you ever so much. <laughs> you got XP for that. That's all. Let's go. Uh, all right, task complete. I guess that's... Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. <laughs> you want to try to slip away unnoticed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One moment you're running like the wind, then you've suddenly turned around and have given him the finger, furiously, with both hands. Why? <laughs> you know, it's a good question. Oh no! Oh no! The lady in the wheelchair is right behind me, isn't she? That's true. Yes. And it's worrying. But let's not fixate on it. <laughs> Look at that stupid bartender instead. He has no idea what's going on. You and your fuck you fingers floating in the air. Barkeep's got his mouth agape like an idiot. You showed him. Yeah, this is we are the winner in this situation. <laughs> Why did I do this? Why did I have these bows in my hands to flip him off? Why bows? Well, everything goes dark. Back so soon. <laughs> this does not need to happen. I gave no such commands to my body. Those are mysteries of the spinal cord. The spinal cord has yet to reveal itself to you. Its mysteries 
our unholy mystery. Boy, ain't that the truth. Okay, I'm going to go with the second one. I don't know. This comes off as a lazy effort at reconceptualizing the antics of a shambling drunk. Get meta if with it. If it comes off like that, it's because it is. And you are. I don't know if that is meta because you're, you're like you're talking to your own brain here. Yeah, I, I mean, this, I not, guess that's inherently meta. That's not meta commentary. That's just commentary. You're just commenting on how you're bad at stuff. Oh. How's it going out there? Are the tiny apes screaming about money yet? Not going very well. It doesn't look like it is, sweetie. Are you okay? An old woman appears out of the blackness. No. You have sustained a trauma to your lower neck. In addition, you have strained your left trapezius muscle. Pain surges down your back when you move. I'm not very okay. Ma'am, are you okay? Annabelle. You didn't even what? ask if she was okay. Oh, I interpreted that as sarcasm. As like, <laughs> no, are you okay? That's, That's interesting. Why I didn't click it. Okay, fair enough. Oh, I'm fine. He just tripped over my chair. Check on him. She looks at you with concern. Sir, I didn't I didn't mean for this to happen. I'm sorry. This has always been a cop friendly place. The man seems shaken by the incident. The drinks are on the house, okay? There were a lot of drinks on the tab. I still have to charge you for three nights and the broken window, though. Uh, that's a hundred square. Wow. With your back against the cold mosaic floor, you feel the pain recede. You just need to get up and dust yourself off. Cool. Not entirely cool. You still owe me a hundred real. If you don't have it by tonight, I can't let you back up there. Well, that could be bad news, because our other shoe might God's still be up sake, there. Watch out for yourself. But that's interesting. You managed to you managed to get a significant amount pulled off of your debt there by essentially by being pathetic. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. Do I even have one? But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Ooh, this might be... Hmm. This is reminding me a bit of... Um, you remember in Pentiment when we had to make choices about where we studied, where we came from, and mm -hmm. that. It's giving me that kind of vibe, but I don't yeah, have yeah. any information about the world, so this is all just like a wild stab in the dark. Um, I don't like height. I don't be up on a hill, so I'm going to stay south, maybe. You don't really know, do you? I have only a vague, blackened image. A vague, blackened image doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. Okay, encyclopedia. Being very literal. Could I trace the way back somehow to the exact street, the exact number on a building? You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. All right. So do you see? Do you see that? Yes. I guess not. <laughs> do you know? Do you notice the UI element? Uh, the when you when you gained that yeah. thought. Okay. So lo lonesome long way home is the one. Okay, that I have. Yeah. So let's rewind. Let's trace your drunken steps back home. Jump across the raised channel bridge southwest of here. Fall over. Get up. Get off the asphalt in twenty minutes. Shuffle your feet through courtyards, scaring little children. Go under the great raised motor tracks, the 881, until you reach Le Domaine Eminent in North Jamrock. 
The streets are frozen this time of year, caked with ice. Walk down Main to Perdition. There's a side alley there, and your footprints in the mud. Is, an, is that an internalized button? Uh, it is a button. So what would that do, I wonder? And this has a temporary research bonus, factual memory returns for plus one encyclopedia point, and a research time of six hours and five minutes. Okay. I can, I can do that in the background while I'm... I think you should know I can't remember anything. No response. He just arches his brow. I feel like I must repeat this. I don't remember anything. There was heavy drinking involved. Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? Damn! It's a little, it's a little sharp. There is a sudden, harsh edge to his voice. Like he's tired of hearing about your personal affairs. Are you worried you're ignoring? Uh, are you worried you're annoying him? Yeah, and I won't get the cool fan art if I. If, if... <laughs> Listen, you'll always have the fan art. Nothing, nothing you can do in this game will change that. I'm afraid this is a medical situation, and then I'm moving on. I like that combination there. Okay. Really? You look fine to me. The lieutenant gives you a look, though as if performing triage. Thorough, as if performing triage. I was like, wait a second, that didn't make sense the way I read it. I thought some serious, unbelievable damage here. I saw myself in the mirror and had no idea. This psychodrama is unbecoming of an officer. Motherfucker. Focus okay. on other people's troubles, not your own. That is a relief. Your heart beats twice like a fist. The serotonin deficiency makes your teeth clench. Ooh. Mm -hmm. An I'm opportunity dead. to snap at him. The lieutenant glances at his electronic wristwatch. Okay, the forget passes. it. The lieutenant glances at the sports watch on his wrist. I'm gonna say nothing and then we'll, we'll, we'll um... <laughs> Go do your job? Yeah. So there's that hole in the fence he was talking about. Yeah. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. <laughs> you seem to be holding your breath. Oh, that's interesting. So, you know, I, I can't look at it. My option is either to look down or turn away. I'm going to look down. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. I mean, if what Kim said is true and he's been hanging here for seven full days, we're lucky he's in this good of a condition. All right, I'm going to try not to throw up. All right. Good luck. As you breathe in, nice. the odor comes over you. It's a smell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty, 
With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Your muscles tense up. The vision in your dead angle darkens. You feel the sudden urge to push your hand into his soft gut. Hmm. I'm gonna step closer. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enamel boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Yeah, this is quite a scene. Uh, I think we should get it down before we inspect it. Okay. Does it make sense to me? Seems to be more respectful. So how do we get we him down? We should have a look at that belt before we even consider taking him down. It looks oh, okay. worrisome. I will inspect the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. Oh my, there's something on the belt. A familiar word that speaks to the thirst within you. Hmm. What was that? A word? Vermilion, in yellow letters, along the length of the twisting cargo belt. Only a deep longing for vermilion golden spirits lets you decipher the fading logo of the local brewery. See, I don't like either of these options. And I love that I'm stuck with them. Um... This is a bad time for a drink, right? Extremely. <laughs> what kind of Industrial rope is this? Industrial strength. We can use for tying cargo to lorries. And, uh, I can't come for anything other than a harbor. Yes, it looks like they use whatever was on hand, paying no attention to not incriminating themselves. I sure wanted him to stay there. The polyester seems strong. It's not merely polyester. It's still reinforced. See these lines? This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. Rat I'm not familiar with rabbits spelled that way. What? Well, is that a... That's the way that word is spelled. Okay. Yeah, I just, I'm not... Okay. This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. We're assuming dock workers from the harbor did it? The brief suggested as much. Politically motivated by the ongoing strike. Did you not get a briefing? <laughs> you did tell him, like... Uh, yeah, but he has very little patience for... No, they might have forgotten to brief then me. Then you should ask me the first moment we get. How did they even get him up there? The news is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. Yeah. yeah. I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt, buckle closes. It's what I would do. Seems easier than climbing out there. Back off and look at the corpse. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt, limbs limp and torso covered in tattoos. Uh, we've looked at the belt. Now, how do we get him down? Are you sure we've finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? Okay. We might miss some of these things once he's done. He thinks you should do it exactly the opposite of the way you think you should do it. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. That's the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A 
fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you, out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots, they're armor, possibly part of a larger set. These aren't just boots, are they? They're armor. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. What kind of armor is this exactly? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. What happened to the rest the of it? The locals probably scavenged it. It would be odd if he had more on after seven days. Kind of odd that even this is left. For these pieces. The armor could yield information. Maybe he'll know something. He nods toward the red-haired boy, eyeing you suspiciously. If you wear those pieces, it will help me protect your mortal coil. <laughs> Thanks, Fantashult. The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form, ageless and synthetic. Uh, a small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Suddenly, your biceps coil up. Your elbow is sharp and cocked for a punch. So you see how, like, the things that you're good at, they yeah. intercede. Like, these are the places your character's brain goes immediately. Yeah. Sounds <laughs> fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether. Hmm. Like whirls of floorboards, the design looks organic, influenced by highly resistant wood materials like lignum vitae and ebony, perhaps. What does this remind me of? If trees were made of porcelain, this is what their cross sections would look like. Yeah, I run my fingers over the line. The smooth, glossy surface fractures into ever more intricate interconnections, peaking on the right sabaton, where you notice. The whirls are in the shape of a letter and number combination. E50, 100, 1000. I really like that. I really like, even though that was probably like pretty easy on the numbers end, on the back, I like the way that that like sort of ran through your specializations, ran through like a thing that your character is uniquely suited to in the world, where it's just like, you can't help but notice the art of the thing and tracing along the art of the thing leads you to the clue. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like there's a serial number on the right side. Good. Can you read it to me? Uh, oh, I like he tips the drawing ball point of his pen on his tongue. That's nice. Uh, E50.100.1000. We have a make and a number. That's something. We can use the radio in my kinema when we're done. Either station can change it for us. Do we need another shoe? That's true. The food this off. feels dangerous. Are you sure? Inland Empire, you are such a baby. I'm not the sabatons dangle off the man's decay. How could it be dangerous? Ageless Ridiculous. And synthetic. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso right. covered in tattoos, and extremities blotched and pink and blue. The tattoos next. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Oh. Alcohol and heart. Your fist clenches suddenly. 
<laughs> no, it will you be riddled with disco. <laughs> no, you cry. Decay is creeping on the tattoo. Already, most of the canvas that's holding it has darkened. Now it disintegrates slowly, letting out a stink. Is this a map of the night sky? A map of the stars. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century machinery, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized somehow. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. I'm missing something here. So am I. A sudden ringing fills the air as the lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. I'll let the lieutenant work. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. He produces two metal-capped ampules and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. I have only two ampules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse, peering into it. The lens needs adjusting. And then... A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it. The lieutenant says and shakes the paper, letting it dry in the cold wind. On it, a color-perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest. I'm going to say cool machine, because it's obviously what we need the photo for. I'm not going to... I don't want him. I don't want him to be irritated at me. <laughs> and disappointed in me. And I'm already. I've already lost that battle. To claw something back. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> oh, they're making me. Uh, it contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter to us. Someone should decipher it. We need to show it around. Uh, can I have it? I should look at it later without the corpse. Sure. Just don't lose it. He hands you the piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. The glossy eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. You've acquired an interactable item. Investigate this item further by going to the interact tab in your inventory. All right, I will look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. All right, I'm going to try this check. Tell me, who are you, dead man? The corpse is dead silent. You have no idea why you just said that. Yeah, that was out loud. There were quotation marks around it. Yeah, I'm aware. Who okay. is he? He is male, 40 to 50, with an athletic build. So if you mouse over the locked thing, it tells you there's a there's a way to reopen the check. Okay. I'm the corpse back looks off, right then. through you as you distance yourself from its stench. Eyes like a shark. Yeah, I'll squint and take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. I'll observe. This is, this is Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green 
in the cold spring air. I'm squinting, Kim. Why am I doing it? It's... How should I know why you are squinting, officer? It's a good question. Face and hands are pink. Thighs, too. The rest is greenish. Squint harder. Squint as hard as I can. Oh. You are trying to assess lividity. I will relax my eyes. The monster comes back into focus. An explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. Ugh. So what do you think? I think he's dead and about to explode. I like how the half light is always like a mm -hmm. it's like it, it has it has a feeling but it it, it is it, it kinda of runs away with itself. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, I'll say something is coming out of him and cover my nose. The pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud. Below the man's yeah. feet, purge liquid is dripping into it, drop by drop. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck he's saying? <sighs> Talking about shit. Whoa. Whoa. These, these children. All right. <laughs> oh, are you... I'm about to reclaim a slur. Okay. Okay. Malicious laughter erupts in the yard. Sounds like seagulls. Yeah. <laughs> Big said he's a. F <laughs> the lieutenant's face is made of stone. Anyway, back to this. Uh, he's beating up. See the bruises? I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little spot. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. He means you fucked him up good, Kuno. Fucked him up brutal-like. I don't I don't care for these children. No. Can I tell you, I don't care for children, Chet. Okay. <laughs> Is there anyone you do like? Yes. I like you. Aw. Thank you for taking that obvious that obvious bait. I appreciate it. Um, okay, I'll ask if we should worry if his stomach looks like it's going to explode. There's a strong buildup of gases, yes. Rigor mortis becoming liver mortis. He'll be fully limp by tomorrow. I don't think he'll explode. I hope not. Did you know that William the Conqueror exploded? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. Well, I know that, and now you know. And now we all know it. I, I imagine you just sent a bunch of people off to Google. Uh, I'll ask him what he thinks. I don't know what to think. I think he was upright immediately after death. Blood has gathered in his hands and feet and his neck. He points to his fat and chin. The noose acted like a tourniquet, mm. keeping the blood in his head. The Oof. hypostasis here is in tune with the hanging. That's what I think. Well... Uh, could it still be he was moved after death? That's an interesting question. There's always a chance. We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. You don't want to tell Kim that you think the guy's dead? No. <laughs> I'm back off the catch. But there is no breath to catch. 
Only the cadaver filling the air and your nostrils. He slowly rotates before you, decomposing. Okay, the preliminary examination is done. Let's get him down from there. Mm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting it. There's no question. There's only cutting. How hard can it be? All right, your, your physical instrument thinks it's up to the task. You're probably right. You know, you know your All own right. strength, sort of. I can cut the bell easily. Where are those chain cutters you mentioned? Two kings. No. <laughs> I don't doubt your physical prowess, officer, but that's aircraft strength material, and we do not have a secure platform to perform the procedure on. The risk of acrobatic failure is one we cannot take. We must not become comedy for the locals. Well, I, any further. <laughs> yeah. What book have you got against comedy pigs? Oh, we could saw the branch. Climb up there and saw the branch? Yeah, either one of us could do it. We could use the kid's ladder on the side of the tree. I don't trust that ladder. The assailants didn't use it. It's rotten and less sturdy than it looks. And I don't see another good way up there. Also, it doesn't really look that sturdy in the first place. <laughs> Honestly, I prefer a non-acrobatic solution to this. He looks around, and then at you. Why? Clown cops climb tree, fall down. Enraged cop assaults children after falling from tree. That's, that's fair. I would probably assault the children before falling from the tree, though. Those kids are annoying. Creating cup, they like that word, sows the branch he's sitting on, literally. Local children report corpse mutilation. Fuck yeah, climb that shit, monkeys. <sighs> See, you're only making them do those things less. Can you see into the future, Kim? You're right. The risks are too high and there are too many. Yes. We should use acrobatics as the very last option. After we've tried everything on them. Oh, these have got to be the most fucking boring musical parts I've ever seen. Okay, I don't know what that word means, but it's probably a slur. Yeah. I can't believe you're going to let the fear of these kids just bully you out of doing something incredibly impressive. Maybe we can shoot him now. I don't. He's gonna. He's gonna say no. But you know. Bang bang time, pig! Shoot his head off. The enthusiasm is unrestrained. How? I. I don't know. What do you think? Just you... shoot the belt. The bullet will break it. It absolutely will not, officer. That's not how physics works. It will maybe cut one thread loose. I'm gonna be so uncomfortable this entire game. He's just is gonna be continually telling me how dumb I am. Oh. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the Kuno with some shit. The fact that he calls himself the Kuno is is worse. That's. Gosh. Uh, say nothing, let him choose. Silence. With his elbow sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks. He then steps back and assumes the fellow's desk position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. I'm not going to say anything. You're not going to cheer him on? 
What? I don't want to break his concentration. Okay, all right. Does that make sense? I, I, you're the boss. He's gonna fucking miss. The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. Oh my God, that was so many types of wrong. Who taught Four Eyes to shoot? Whip up a grueling training regiment for him right now. Beat the man into it. Go, go, go. Okay, regimen and regiment are not the same word. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't like that. Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? Okay. So that was embarrassing. What I, now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down with all the assistance. Take his gun and show him how to use it. Uh, maybe he asked for help from the harbor. <laughs> Just gonna ignore a physical instrument. Yeah, no, because he's he's. I. Mm, no. You don't have to listen I, to it. Yeah, I I don't go in for for this. It, it, it's it's so much macho bullshit, and I'm I'm not. I'm not feeling that vibe. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The union appeared to be suspect in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. Confirmed. It's unsafe. Yeah, it does seem like if 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 what's happening here is that the union was having some kind of yeah. dispute. Yeah, wait, let's reconsider. It was just the only other one I saw where we get someone else but to help what us. Other options. The corpse twists on the belt like chicken on a skewer. I don't know. You're pretty strong. I, I know Kim's against all of the ideas that involve brute strength, but like, this is the stuff your character's good at. I, I don't know. Mm. I will say like none of. Uh, I definitely did not handle it in any of those ways, but my character couldn't have. Uh, can't someone else do it? Someone else? You mean like, the police? <laughs> I mean someone who's below detective. Someone like a paid garbage man or a cleaning crew. I have bad news for you. That is a detective. Well, I don't know that because I lost my memory and you're not lying to me. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down fast. <sighs> I should not try to shoot him down because my... my brief my, my, my motor stats are shed uh, that seems like a reasonable conclusion to me I'm out of ideas I'm going to look at him uh, let me talk about getting him down again so then we're yes we do <sighs> I, I go back into the chain cutter thing us. But that's aircraft strength material. Let's see if you have the have option to uh, push through here. Procedure. Yeah. The risk of acrobatic failure is one we cannot take. We must not become comedy for the locals. The fuck have you got against comedy pigs? Okay, yeah, he will. He literally will not let you do it. <sighs> we are not getting him down already. Not getting him down is a task that's already accomplished. <laughs> Sadly, it's not our job to keep him up there, but to get him down. Okay. That is an entirely fair castigation. I can try to shoot him down myself. I'm not a, it's, I mean, it's I think... As it is, as shooting firearms like punks here. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. Just don't hit the victim. You need your gun for this. I only have one gun! <laughs> I'm gonna shoot that kid, it's gonna Oops. stop. Oops. This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. Officer, why do we only have one gun? Uh, 
<laughs> Remember when I told you I didn't have my badge uniform with me when I woke up? I didn't have my gun either. That is even more unfortunate than the badge. You need to contact your station about it as soon as possible. Try not to lose this one, please. I take the gun. Take it, you fucking banani boiker. Take it and shoot yourself in the mouth. That feels... <sighs> Point the gun at the, the belt. Battle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground and your left hand supporting your gun arm. <sighs> How well am I going to do this with my... I am, I am shocked that you didn't think it was worth like my, taking my a second to one. feel the weight of the gun. So notice you did level up. Okay. You have You have a skill point to distribute. <laughs> okay. Um, that's an interesting decision. Well, I want so I can shoot. Yeah, better. yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Um, the the f why would feeling the way I've never held a gun. I don't know. So just don't... like trying to get comfortable with the thing. I it seems like it couldn't have hurt. I don't know. Listen, you're doing the thing. Shoot yourself in your mouth. Jesus. Are you, you are allowed to point the gun at the child. Close my left eye first. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, slick, with the falling rain. The corpse slowly rotates. Look, he's crying. You gonna cry now, fucking faggoty? Well, that one's pretty easy to figure out. Oh. I did it. The buckle explodes into tiny well, pieces. Coming loose with a whirr. Sometimes you just roll the 12. With your hand numb from the recoil, you look at the body slump down. For a moment, the man appears to kneel in front of you. Looking straight at you, helpless, trapped within itself. Who killed you? Communism. Huh. That. <laughs> that doesn't seem super likely. <laughs> yeah, no. Then the rigor in his muscles gives up, and he smashes sideways into the spring mud, letting out a horrid stench. You've been pleased. <laughs> what the hell? Just say the dumbest shit you can think of. Uh, I don't like this third one because it, it sounds like I'm trying to impress the child. So it, I, Yeah, that I'm does not... definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're going to have to select one of these options. They're all bad. Oh. How did I... Do that. Try being a damn good shot. Ace is high. Oh. The lieutenant raises his right hand, the waiting for you to slap it. A custom invented by the aerostatic brigades during the revolution is used to celebrate success in Revachon, especially in sports. The gesture is spread across the world, despite the defeat of the revolutionaries themselves. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll slap that hand. No foley. The lieutenant takes a little hop to perform the customary salutation. Your palm hurts from the slap. It's precise and down to the point. I knew these guys were. So you gained a thought from doing that, which is interesting. I don't remember. I think we've already diverged in some interesting ways here. Okay. The Insulindian Civil War was not the first war to see the use of aerostatic aircraft on both sides, but it was the longest. For eight years, folded multi-rotor aircrafts crisscrossed the air above Revachol, Ozone, Faisalamar, and the Arcade Islands. They made sweeps over sandy beaches and shot each other out of the blue sky, 
then sank as wrecks to the bottom of the sea. The Aces High was a custom on the revolutionary side, performed by squadron mates after landing. Lieutenant Kitsuragi likes it. Why is that? Hey, yeah, this is like telling... This is an opportunity to, to think about Kim for a second here. What's what's Kim's deal, actually? And get a temporary I'm, plus one empathy toward him specifically. I'm, I'm going to switch my... Oh, I, I'm doing both. Okay. I can do more than, I can do more than one thing at a time. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. I wanted to... No, hang on. Well, are you still reclaiming the slur? I am. Kuno cracks with laughter. Sounds like someone strangling a seagull. It's clear he enjoys himself. I knew they suck each other off. <laughs> what, what now? <laughs> we will perform a field autopsy and determine the cause of death. But before... Excuse me. Just turn away from the corpse. I don't blame him. This has been really gruesome. The is getting bad. I'm sorry to interrupt the jubilations here. I need a little breather before we do the autopsy. All right, I give him back his gun. In the meantime, we should try to interview Everard Claire, the leader of the Union. Harbor property was clearly used in the hanging. The harbor just east of here. Getting in might prove a challenge, though. Or we could ask around for the representative of the logistics company. My initial information says the Wild Pines have sent some sort of strike negotiator to wrangle control back from Evrard. Is this the famous list of internal initial interviews? Yes. And those were the interviewees. Let's go. Okay, well, congratulations on on that. I think we probably ought to call it here for today. Yeah. This one's got, it got a little long, but awfully successful for your first day on the job. Your first fourth day on the job. You know. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, before we actually dip out here, I do just want to ask you a question real quick. Like, based yeah. on what you've seen here, what do you think of this design for an RPG? This thing where, like, this the skills are almost like characters that speak to you? And the, the way the the way that, like, the things your character is good at sort of interject themselves into every situation? Uh, I think that's neat, and I think that replicates the, you know, um, you know the old saying that uh, if uh, all you have is a hammer, everything you, you mm -hmm. see looks like a nail, and, like, I think having that kind of the game having you lean into those things, and those things being the first things that pop up, um, I think that's really smart. I think that's that's really clever, and it helps shape the the sense of a character. You know, um, them having their kind of own personalities and dialogue, these internal components of of, of a person. I haven't encountered this before in a game, and I find it really fascinating. It has a has a very literary quality. Like, like the writing is very strong. We talked about that earlier uh, in this very episode. But um, I think it allows that writing to be showcased in a way that you ne wouldn't necessarily get if um, if it didn't do that. And it has a kind of a interiority that is. Um, quite appealing you know it, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it's so yeah i'm i'm enjoying it so far okay well that's gonna be it for us for today thank you all so much for watching when you come back next time i guess we're gonna have to figure out what to do with this body and also there's a bunch more stuff that really should have happened half a week ago that we have to get to maybe maybe we can yet recover kim's patience toward us uh, so come back next time for that and we'll see you then Bye.